Greetings one and all two universes. In this show we will analyze the stats, weapons, and abilities of two fighters to see who would win in a battle to the death. Many people have predicted the outcome, so let's see who guessed right and who guessed wrong. And be sure to stay tuned after the episode so you can see the next fighters and make your predictions down in the comment section below or in a video response. And who knows, your comment or video response could be featured in the next episode. With all that said, let's meet our two fighters. The Scout from Team Fortress 2 and the Inkling Boy from Splatoon. The cartoony shooters where weapons are separated by class and teams are separated by color. One's a kid and one's a squid kid. Oh, come on, of course Scout's a kid. Can you really call that lanky soda-drinking stick figure a man? But anyways, which of these two crazy kids would win in a battle to the death? This is Universes. I was the middle child in my family, and I can already tell that my youngest brother has to go through a lot. But he only has three other siblings. I can't possibly imagine the torture Scout must go through with seven older brothers. While typically the youngest will hide in their bedroom corner until the heat dies down, Scout was quite the opposite. He was more excited than ever to become a part of the brawl. Sadly, these fights he longed to join would often end before he'd even get a chance to throw a single punch. To remedy this little flaw, Scout trained himself to start running. He ran everywhere as fast as he could until eventually he was able to beat all of his siblings to the fray. Later in life, little Jeremy here would use his newfound running skills to steal some briefcases, capture some points, and kill some fools with his team of mercs. Although he can't exactly kill some fools with running alone, but luckily Scout has a wide arsenal of cool weapons and fancy attributes to help him out. One of these attributes includes double jumping. Scout can somehow leap on the air to gain some extra height. Scout's primary weapon is the scatter gun, and some of these can even assist with his jumping skills. With the force of nature, Scout can shoot towards the ground to launch himself a bit higher in his jumps. There's also the soda popper, which gives him five additional jumps as long as he fills up the height meter, but that requires him to damage his foes first. Scatter guns aren't the only thing he has, though. Scout also has a bunch of secondary weapons. Pistols that also increase his jump height, vaporize foes, and heals him with every shot he lands, a gigantic butcher's knife that he can hurl at some foes to make them bleed out, and some tasty drinks. Soaking someone with the mad milk frees them up for extra damage, but Scout's favorite drink is the Bonk Atomic Punch. When under the effects of this soda, Scout is fast enough to outpace everything in the game, as seen by the giant word Miss hanging above his head whenever someone shoots at him. For melee weapons, Scout has a nice collection of bats. The only one anyone ever uses, though, is the Sandman. It can hit balls towards foes to stun them upon impact, or even launch them several meters away with a home run swing. He learned some magic abilities as well, like invisibility and throwing fireballs, and he literally gained the ability to respawn thanks to the medic. Yep, it's canon now, not just a mechanic. <clears throat> but back to the melee stuff. With his bat, Scout can knock foes several meters away, including the heavy with his gigantic minigun. His guns and weapons are strong enough to take down gigantic mechs and tanks, and he even fought a giant bread monster. His weapons can also get stronger and faster with upgrades, but these still aren't enough to get him through the fray without a scratch. He has to be durable too. He can survive having a pigeon surgically implanted into his chest, and he can survive Saxton Hale, a monster of a man that even sharks can't handle. And finally, he can survive four rocket blasts, one knocking him over, and from the viewpoints of the rocket themselves, three headed straight for that Boston face. Those rockets are pretty lucky they actually hit him considering that Scout's quick enough to quick step sentry gun fire. And his bonk atomic punch can give him incredible massively hypersonic speeds as he's able to avoid anything in the game, even Heavy's minigun fire at close range. Sadly he can't shoot while using this and it's only temporary, but it's fine. He's still got the moves, the weapons, and a bucket of chicken. Grass grows, birds fly, and brother he hurts people. Now let's see if the inkling fits into his definition of people. Okay crap, I gotta go. Screw you, though. After a horrible catastrophe, humanity has died out and these new creatures have evolved to become the next dominant species. Developing culture, language, and war. And yes, I am 100% talking about Inklings. You know those creatures from Splatoon? That Nintendo game? Mm-hmm. Way darker than your happy jumping mushroom man, am I right? Anyways, over 100 years prior to the events of Splatoon, the Inklings were at war with another race known as the Octarians. They had a bit of trouble at first, but they managed to rebound and win the war with the help of Captain Cuttlefish. Everything worked out fine until the Octarians came back for another try to take over the world by luring Inklings to them with a stolen zapfish. Once again, with the help of Captain Cuttlefish himself, a 
single inkling was able to stop the Octarian army and keep the world of Splatoon safe and free to play whatever games they liked. Their favorite happened to be Turf Wars. To win this game, the Inklings must work together as a team to color the majority of the ground in their color of ink. And they are able to do so with a large arsenal of weapons. Shooters rapidly fire ink in a long constant burst like a submachine gun, great for spraying the walls or right under your feet. Chargers work like snipers, point, hold, and fire. These are great for splatting enemies and covering a long vertical range. Rollers are melee weapons that can be used to crush foes and cover a long horizontal area. And last but not least, the sloshing and splatting Battering weapons are great for covering the most spots in the smallest amount of time. But guns aren't all the Inklings have, they have quite a large number of sub-weapons as well. Ink bombs, homing mines, disruptors that can lower the running speed up to 63%, and sprinklers! Then finally they have special attacks. They can transform into a giant kraken, vaporize their foes with powerful sound waves, or create a gigantic tornado of ink with the ink strike. Even their biology is impressive. Inklings can transform into little squid forms that can travel through ink undetected, sliding up walls and through tight spaces. They can regenerate health and ammo by hiding in their ink and even launch themselves great distances. Now in both their kid and squid form, they appear to have average running and movement speed, but when they're launching themselves, they can travel across an entire city block sized map in a minimum of five seconds. Considering the average city block is 750 feet long, the Inklings can launch themselves at at least 102.2 miles per hour. Their weapons are much quicker though. Their killer whale fires sound waves for crying out loud, and their guns can shoot at the velocity of bullets, thus explaining how they can smash crates with it and push back gigantic metal fists. They can even explode the tentacles of gigantic Octarian monsters. Ew. They've defeated the Octostomp, a gigantic metal cube of doom. The Octonozzle, I don't even know how to describe that thing. The Octowhirl, a gigantic spike ball. And the Octomaw, a gigantic fish shark creature. And finally, DJ Octavio and his Octobot. Or basically those giant metal fists I mentioned earlier. With the defeat of all these foes, the war was won for all, thanks to one little inkling. But now that the war is over, it's time for a little one-on-one -on -one versus the scout. Let's take a look at your predictions while I calculate the results. Alright, today I'm going to be doing a universe prediction against Scout versus Splatoon Kid. And I'm going to cut straight to the point, and I'm going to say that Scout's going to win this battle. Uh, the reason why I say this is because he's pulled off some pretty impressive things, like taking three rockets from the soldiers that can obliterate foes, foes in just, you know, one blast. And death battles, of course, you know, they lied, but they said that uh, Scout didn't take those missiles because they body shot... When they body shot tougher foes, it kills them. Even if they weren't body shots, it really doesn't matter because in Meet the Soldier, it was seen that, or it was shown that shoulder <laughs> soldier shot a rocket down to the heavy and pyro's feet to their feet, and they still blew up. So if it was a body shot, it still didn't matter. Plus, Scout has such a bigger arsenal, he just you know, Sandman and guillotine him from far away, and even his headpiece melted into his skull several times, and he survived. And in the newest comic, uh, when Scout died from being, you know, sliced in half, because even his flesh, so, I mean, who's not gonna die from that? Uh, when he went to heaven, him and God are literally best friends. Scout can just come back to life whenever he wants, and you can just ask God, and God most likely will agree. Because God is Scout's best friend, and Scout is God's best friend. Um, not only that, but, uh, he's outrun minigun bullets and sentry gun bullets, and... He even took a point blank explosion in Expiration Day, which was strong enough to kill the bread monster, and Scout was perfectly fine. Is there more to him? I'm trying to think if there's more to Scout right now. Right, and this uh, Sandman thing, that's capable of launching foes several feet, like, if with the Sandman, the top kill. But, uh, if you want to do in-game feats, then he's like, capable of, you know, cracking the skull with the heavy, flipping the heavy, pretty much flipping every merc. And, uh, the Bonk Atomic Punch, that makes him irresistible, or invincible from anything. Which, to be honest, I think that Scout, when he drinks it, he's just going at very hyper speed. The reason why he's not going hyper speed in the game is for game balance, obviously. Uh, cause, even if you shoot him, there's gonna be a big miss symbol on him. So, that means he's, like, faster than bullets, sniper rounds, pretty much everything when he drinks the Bonk Atomic Punch. Not only that, but he even survived being yanked by Saxon Hill, and that guy is capable of punching over 2,000 PSI and 15 PSI already shatters a human skull. Plus, Splatoon Kid, all he has is ink. That's not gonna do that much against Scout when this guy literally has bullets that's strong enough to destroy sentry guns and robots. 
So, yeah, that's my prediction for Universe's Scout vs. Splatoon Kid. I'm really excited for this one. Anyway, so, see you guys later. Hi everybody, it's Penguin Party 119 here. Today, I'm going to be doing another Universe's prediction, and yes. My last one, Diddy Kong vs. Crash Bandicoot. Didn't get featured, but I don't care. Like, I just like making these videos, and I like the pull the brief, so there's a reason why I do them. And I only do them for matches that I think are interesting in. This one, I think is really interesting. I want. And, and I love both of the series. Splatoon and Team Fortress 2. The next fight is Scout vs. Inkling. And I'm going to say the Scout will win for sure, honestly. Like, he has bigger arsenal, a bigger defense, and he has much higher speed. Like, if he's able to, like, beat Tracer, like, and... And I'm going to say this. I think Tracer will honestly win in, like, a fight. Win in, like, a race against Inklings. Yeah, but Scout's like much faster. And don't forget, don't forget all the weapons he has. Like, he has, like, the weapon. He has the Mad Milk. He has the Winger. He has the Soda Popper. He has the Backscatter. And don't forget he has, like, the Salmon Atomizer and Boston Basher. Like, a lot of those weapons can, like, or have huge advantages. Like, the Soda Popper, like... Since Inkling like and Scout like are gonna be able to like are gonna be able to like move around like when Inkling like when Scout uses a chance like he's known for flanking, he can basically just like keep backscattering. He can just keep like attacking like Inkling and just like be able to like ruin Inkling today by just having five extra jumps. And the same it could be as the it can stun Inkling. And defense, but I'm gonna restate this one, he can survive in the back of his space since because I was watching like one of the comics the other day. I was watching like one like a YouTube video and and I mentioned one of the comics that's comics in Team Fortress 2 series. And one is surviving Saxon Hill and surviving the three missiles. Well rockets from rocket launchers, but you know the point. But basically I have a scout. Scout for the win. And Leopold the Brave. If you're watching this, I want to say I love your new series, Universals, and you're awesome. Bye. And the results are in. The winner is... The Scout. Okay, okay, even though you guys were right that the Scout wins, your biggest reason was because the Inkling shoots ink instead of bullets? Come on, guys, we've been over this so many times. Hihachi's just a human, but look at what he can do. Spike's weapons are meant for catching monkeys, but look what they can do. Inklings shoot ink and not bullets, but look what that ink can do. Versus debating 101, people. Ah, but anyways, on to the results. The Inklings do have some good advantages in this fight, despite being the losers, but once we go over their two biggest ones, you'll understand how Scout beats them all. So the Inklings' two best qualities revolve around their regeneration. Regenerating health and regenerating ammo. Let's cover the first one. We've gone over healing factors quite a number of times on the show already, so by now you probably know that all you need to beat one out is to overpower it or outpace it. So let's see if Scout fits in that category. Now, Inklings have the ability to recover from anything that doesn't have the force to immediately splat them. But but as we can see, the Inklings' own weapons are strong enough to do that. These weapons at their strongest can smash crates and push back gigantic metal fists which are also capable of one-shotting Inklings. This is something Scout easily outmatches with him being able to take on robots and tanks. And considering the Scout is strong enough to knock the combined weight of both Heavy and his miniguns several meters away, his physical strength is enough to instantly splatter an Inkling as well. Overpowering the Inkling's healing factor is child's play for Scout, and the same can be said for outpacing it. Scout quick-stepping the sentry gun fire is more than enough to prove that he can outpace the subsonic speeds of the Inkling's weapons. Not to mention the Scout's speed reaches massively hypersonic levels when under the effects of Bonk Atomic Punch. Now the Inklings could try to counter Bonk with their Disruptor which slows down the enemy's speed by 63%. But first of all, that's not enough of a decrease to make Scout slower than the Inkling. Second of all, the Disruptor only lasts for 5 seconds while the Bonk Atomic Punch lasts for 8. And finally, this leads us into the Inkling's regenerating ammo. While it's great that they pretty much have unlimited ammo, there's one big flaw. All of their weapons use the same ammo. If their primary is empty, no sub-weapons. If their sub-weapons are empty, no primary weapons. So even if the Disruptor was enough to slow Scout down, they wouldn't have enough ink left to get the job done before having to refill and the effects of the Disruptor wear off. Scout's greater stats and wider arsenal assist him in getting around the Inklings regenerating health and ammo. And this isn't even including Scout's magic or his respawning. So yeah, I hope that paints a pretty picture in your head of how this fight would go. The winner is the Scout.
Get ready for the next battle.